I thought it might be a good idea to show you an example of how to use circuits and internal resistance. So here we have a circuit and it contains 10 identical 5 ohm resistors. Now these ones are connected in parallel and the question is what is the equivalent resistance of those 10 resistors? So what we really have going on here, we have, um, let's say I just try to draw it, there's one resistor and another one, another one, another one. There's a whole bunch of them and they're all connected together. Like this, they're all connected in parallel. Now I don't feel like drawing all 10 of them, that's a little bit annoying. Right? So what we've learned is that we can actually take a look at these and deal with them as if they're just one resistor. This is going to make this much easier to look at. So rather than imagining it as 10 separate resistors, we're going to see them as just one equivalent resistor. Now since they're measured in or connected in parallel, that means that we can use our rule for parallel resistors, which says that 1 over R. Now I'm going to put a little P here to mean parallel, because we're going to redraw this as just one resistor. I like to put a little P just to remind myself, this isn't really a resistor that's sitting in there, it's an equivalent resistor. So the equation goes 1 over RP equals 1 over well, R1 plus 1 over R2 plus dot dot dot. Now in our case then, we have a whole bunch of 5 ohm resistors. So I could say that 1 over RP equals 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5 plus, and I have 10 of those. But because I have the same denominator, I have the same common denominator here for all of them, well I've got 1 plus 1 plus 1, I've got 10 of those. So that means I can say that 1 over RP equals 10 over 5. It's going to be the equivalent of doing that. So, if I want just RP by itself, then I can just, well, some people call this cross, multiply, and divide. I just like to say use algebra and do it. So, in this case, what I can do, I can actually flip both of these equations. The reason I can do that is I can take my RP, I can multiply both sides by RP, that puts it up here. I can then uh, get rid of the 5 by multiplying both sides by the 5. I can get rid of the 10 by dividing both sides by the 10. So I end up essentially with RP equals 5 over 10. And you're welcome to use your calculator for this, but I don't think you need one. This is, this is not calculator needed. So the very last step then is to figure out, well, what's 5 over 10? That's 0.5. So then I can state that this is my equivalent resistance. So I could redraw, instead of having these 10 horrible uh, resistors all connected in parallel, I can redraw the circuit with just one single 0.5 ohm resistor, and that's going to do the same thing. So as far as the circuit's concerned, it's like there's just that one sitting there instead of 10 5 ohm resistors. So let's look at the second part now. Now we have an internal resistance of the battery, and we're told it's 0.1 ohms, and then we know that its EMF is 6 volts. And the question is, what's the current in the circuit? Well, here I think it helps to draw the circuit out. So I'm going to draw it with a little battery, but I'm going to include its internal resistance. Like we've seen before, I'm going to draw it like this right here with the terminals. So the battery is going to be represented by this, a battery plus a little resistor. Now, this is going to be a really simple circuit then, because I've redrawn my entire circuit as just this thing right here, which was my big resistance, which in this case was, well, it's not big, I suppose, but it's the equivalent. It's 0 0.5 ohms. That's this resistance here. This isn't maybe very clear here. Maybe I should just redraw it. So this is like this. This is a big R here. And this is 0 0.5 ohms. That's this one. Now, how do we deal with this? Well, we know that this right here is the EMF. That's what the battery sort of, remember, it's like it tries to put out that much voltage, so to speak. Um, then we have the internal resistance, which is a little r here. That's what we have going on here, little r. Now, little r is 0 0.1 ohms. 
and we know that the EMF is 6 volts. So whenever I think of a question or face a question that has internal resistance, then I would get out my trusty data booklet and I would look up the equation for how to deal with internal resistance, which goes like this. EMF equals I times big R plus little r. That's how EMF works. It's related. So the EMF of the battery, what it's trying to put out, so to speak, is equal to the current in the entire circuit times the sum of the two resistors. In other words, the big resistor here plus the little mini internal resistance there. Now I'm looking for the current, so I want I. And in order to solve I, that's really easy in this case. I mean, I could, of course, uh, multiply these two out. But that actually might defeat the purpose. If I want I by itself, then this is algebraically speaking, this is quite handy. And that's because in order to get I on its own, well, that means I can divide this R plus R here. I can divide both sides of the equation by this. That'll get rid of it on this side. And that means I'll just have the EMF divided by R plus R. So that means the current then will be, well, let's see, the EMF is 6 volts. I divide that by, let's see, the big resistance, well that's the 0.5 ohms. And I add to that the internal resistance, which is 0.1 ohms. Actually, this turns out pretty handy because we have 6 divided by 0 0.6. If we think of that carefully then, that's the equivalent of just saying 10. So we can say this is just 10 amperes. So that's the current here, that's the current. That equals I. Well, actually, I never really like seeing it like that. Hold on a second. I always get annoyed when I do that. So let me just say this leads to that the current is equal to 10 amperes. It's always nice to have an equation and state what you're actually finding. So I equals 10 amps or amperes. Now, the last thing then, what's the potential difference across the terminal? You might think, well, why am I asking for that? I know it's 6 volts. No, the battery's trying to have a potential difference of 6 volts. But because it has its own internal resistance, there's like lost um, voltage, you could say. So that means then that there's going to be less. Now, I mean, I could actually look at it like this. Remember this equation here? This I, this time I'm going to multiply the two out. So this is like EMF equals IR plus I times little r. And this right here would be the equivalent of um, what the actual voltage is. And this right here would be the lost voltage. And that would tell you what the EMF is. That's sort of a way to look at it. But I think an easier way to look at it is just to use Ohm's law, which is that V equals I R. That tells you the voltage across the entire terminal here, the voltage across the whole thing. That's the potential difference across the entire thing is going to be just equal to the current of the entire circuit times the equivalent resistance here. So in that case, it's going to be real easy. Just V equals IR. So that means it's going to be, well, I was 10 amps. So it's 10 times big R, which is 0 0.5. And if I multiply 10 times 0 0.5, well, that's the same thing as taking my 0 0.5 here and moving it over, moving the decimal over. That just gives me 5 volts. So what this means then is that although the battery is, is attempting to have a potential difference of 6 volts, see it's trying to have 6 volts sort of given out. In the equivalent uh, or in the analogy of the um, circuit with the chocolate, this is like, you know, the person's trying to give out 6 volts, of, uh, so 6 pieces of chocolate, let's say. But the problem is there's already a chair within the battery that's already eating up one volt of it. So can you see it's trying to put out six volts, but in the end it really puts out five volts. In other words, the rest of the circuit behaves as if it was a five volt battery, not six. That's because it was losing energy and so it loses potential difference. Okay, so it tries to put out six, it loses some, in the end it really puts out five. When I say puts out, that's not entirely correct. We should really be saying it has a potential difference of this. All right, so the battery really has a potential difference of 5 volts. 
Hopefully that makes this uh, type of question a little bit more clear.